Today in our 2004 Dodge Durango, we'll be installing the Tow Ready T1 Vehicle Wiring Harness with 4 Pole Flat Connector, part number 118390. To begin our install, we'll first go ahead and open up the rear hatch. Then we'll need to remove both rear taillight assemblies. To remove the taillight assemblies, we'll first need to remove the two push pin fasteners on each side. To remove the push pin fastener, we'll pry out on the center of the fastener and then remove the fastener completely. Once we have them both out, we can then gently rock the taillight assembly and pull it out of its position, being careful not to break the alignment tabs underneath. Once we have it out and away from the body of the vehicle, we'll then go ahead and remove the manufacturer's wiring harness. To remove the wiring harness, we'll first need to push the red locking tab over and then press on the connector lock, removing the wire connector from the socket. Now with the driver's side done, we'll go ahead and repeat the same process on the passenger side. Next, we're ready to begin installing our new T1 vehicle wiring harness. We'll take our four pole flat connector and the passenger side green and white connector and feed them down between the bumper cover and body or sheet metal of the vehicle. Next, we'll take the red, yellow, brown wire connector and plug it directly into the manufacturer's wiring that we removed from the taillight assembly. Once we have it connected, we'll then lock it in place with the red locking tab. Next, we'll need to hook up the power wire for our converter box. Coming out of the converter box will be a red wire. Supplied with our install kit is a long length of black power wire. To connect the two, we'll use a yellow buck connector provided with our install kit. With both power wires stripped back, we'll then attach the yellow buck connector to both ends. Now with our power wire connected, I recommend to wrap up this connection point with some black electrical tape to help keep out any dust, dirt, debris, or moisture. Next, we'll need to mount the converter box. To mount the converter box, we're looking for a clean, flat surface to adhere to, preferably sheet metal. Next, using a spray bottle and a clean cloth, we're going to go ahead and spray the sheet metal and then wipe it down so we can adhere our converter box directly here to the sheet metal below the driver's side taillight assembly. Once we have the sheet metal cleaned off and dry, we'll go ahead and peel back the two-way adhesive on the converter box and adhere it directly to the sheet metal. Below the driver's side taillight assembly will be a good location. Next, we'll go ahead and route the power wire. To route the power wire, we're going to feed it up from underneath the vehicle behind the driver's side taillight assembly, opposite the direction that we ran our four-pole and passenger side wiring harness. Next, we'll go ahead and secure the wiring behind the taillight assembly using the zip ties provided with our install kit. Then we'll cut off the excess from the zip ties and take the other end of the Tow Ready T-Connector wiring harness and plug it directly into the back of the taillight assembly and locking it in place. Once we have the wire connected, we'll then go ahead and reinstall the driver's side taillight assembly. Next, we'll get underneath the vehicle and start routing our wire. Keep in mind when routing your wires, stay away from any moving components such as steering or suspension or excessive heat such as the exhaust. We'll go ahead and route the four pole behind the bumper fascia brackets and down to the center of the hitch. We'll repeat the same process with the passenger side wiring harness, but keep going past the hitch all the way over to the passenger side and up behind the passenger side taillight assembly. Then using some zip ties, we'll go ahead and secure the wiring to the bumper fascia brackets. Next, we'll take our power wire and we'll need to run it up to the vehicle's engine bay and ultimately to the battery. To assist in routing our wire, we're going to use a pull wire, which can be a stiff piece of wire, or in this case, we're going to use a piece of air tubing. We're going to route the wire through the frame, which will help protect the power wire. Once we have our pull wire in position, we'll then go ahead and take the power wire and attach it to the pull wire. Then we can start pulling our power wire into place. Note, because our power wire is going to run between the frame and the exhaust, for a little added protection, we're going to go ahead and add some wire loom. Once we get the pull and power wire to the bottom of the engine bay, we'll then go ahead and route it up into the engine compartment. Next, we'll move to the engine bay. We'll bring the power wire to the top of the engine compartment. Now that we're at the top of the engine compartment, we'll need to route across the engine bay over to the battery. To do this, we're going to go ahead and drill multiple holes in the plastic cowling that runs across the top of the engine bay. With the holes drilled, we'll then be able to route the wire across and use zip ties to secure it as we go. Now with our power wire routed over to the passenger side near the battery, we'll go ahead and cut off the excess from the power wire and strip it back. Now we're ready to prepare our fuse holder. 
To prepare a fuse holder, we'll go ahead and cut it in half, strip back both sides. We'll add a ring terminal to one side and the yellow butt connector to the other. Then we'll go ahead and take the other end of our butt connector and attach it to our black power wire. Once again, at this connection point, we recommend to wrap it up with some black electrical tape. Now with our fuse holder secured, we'll go ahead and remove the positive battery cover and ultimately attach the ring terminal here to the positive battery post. To do this, we'll go ahead and back the nut off from the positive battery post clamp and note this application is not designed to come all the way off. So we'll back it off as much as necessary. Then taking a pair of side cutters, cut a small opening in our ring terminal, slide it onto the stud and then re-secure the nut. Now with our ring terminal secured, we can go ahead and install the fuse into the fuse holder and then place the cap over the fuse holder. Next we'll go ahead and secure the power wire to the manufacturer's wiring and then cut off the excess from the zip ties to clean up our install look. Now with everything secured and cleaned up, we're ready to test our new four pole connector. To test our connector, we'll simply use a test light by taking the ground clamp and putting it over the white wire bare terminal. This will be the ground for our four pole connector. Then testing the first terminal next to it, which will be the brown wire terminal, will be our running light circuit. The next terminal will be the yellow wire terminal, which will be the left turn signal left braking. And last will be our green wire terminal, which will be the right turn signal right braking. Now we know our new four pole connector works, we're ready to hit the road. And that does it for the install of the Tow Ready T1 vehicle wiring harness with four pole flat connector, part number 118390 on our 2004 Dodge Durango.